The most important thing is to know how to diversify well. And what I mean by that is to go beyond um, the, the, just the traditional 60-40 stock bond mix. I experienced through my lifetime uh, surprises about things that never happened in my lifetime before, but happened many times in history before. And um, uh, the three forces that we're talking about, which is um, there is a long-term debt cycle, um, which we'll get into, um, the, the large wealth and uh, political gaps that go with it, and the rise of a great power to challenge existing great power, happened in the 1930 to 45 period and happened many times before, and are the big drivers, not just of the economic environment, but of, of the whole environment. So let me start with the, the debt cycle. Um, um, there are, you know, in 1945, we began a new world order. 1944, we created a new monetary system, the Bretton Woods monetary system. And then <clears throat> we created that new world order. And that created a bull markets and stocks and an American world order for the most part. There's a cycle um, that we're used to in which um, whenever you have a economic downturn, the central bank hits the uh, gas and can create debt expansion, and that produces an increase in demand. And that happens in three phases at the cycle. Normally, it's interest rates. Um, you lower interest rates, and the economy turns up. But when you hit zero interest rates, uh, which happened in 1932, debt crisis, 1932, we hit zero interest rates. Um, then you go to the second type of monetary policy in which central banks print money and buy financial assets to add liquidity. And those purchases, those sellers of bonds who get the cash, go out and they buy other financial assets, and we have the process going through. And that's the second type of monetary policy. So the only two times that that happened was uh, 2008 to 9, 1929 to 19. 32, zero interest rates, print money, monetization. That'll carry you so far. And then um, there's what I call monetary policy three, which means that um, that money does not trickle down to the population and go all the places that it's needed to go. And that monetary policy means that there has to be the um, what we're seeing now in monetary policy. In other words, the coordination between fiscal and monetary policy so that the central bank is buying assets of a different sort, a wide range of, for a wide range of assets producing liquidity, and also having the um, effect of buying government debt and monetizing it. And that's the late cycle of an, of an expansion. That's what's driving the markets now. That's what's driving the economy now. Um, for example, um, today the Federal Reserve and the, the government is creating the liquidity that we're seeing in the markets. And it has big implications for the value of money. What is the value of money? Where does money go? Cash is going to be a poor investment, and so it goes elsewhere. So that's the character of the environment, um, which means that if you look at the returns of asset classes um, and you take cash, isn't it an interesting world when you have zero or negative interest rates? And um, then there's the desire to create a spread in that, um, so the short-term rates are long, lower than long-term rates. And, there's, and then the, when there's so much liquidity, it is the central bank that is making that market. So when we look at the market today, um, the, it needs the storehold of wealth, and you see it reflected in all asset classes. So that's the main driver, and it also has very big geopolitical implications, because as we come into this environment um, where uh, we have the second influence, the wealth gap, the political gap, it um, means that the distinction of how money and the bills are going to be divided and how that uh, will affect tax policy and the like will matter a lot. How should people invest, and what is the correct asset allocation for this sort of environment? Well, um, the most important, the investment environment going forward will be very different from the environment of the past. I mean, think about it as a zero 
um, and low, very low returning asset uh, environment because the liquidity uh, that's in the market is driving the excess returns of all markets down to be low in relationship to the very low cash rate. So negative real returns, not good for cash and so on. The most important thing is to know how to diversify well. And what I mean by that is to go beyond um, the, the, just the traditional 60-40 stock bond mix or even the same countries um, and to broaden that diversification. To include in that portfolio assets that might um, um, seem um, unusual, to include some gold, to include inflation index bonds, to, incl to think about the currency exposure, to think about safety as different. Most people think that cash is safe. Cash is the least safe investment. It just doesn't have the same volatility to it. But it has, um, um, because they're producing so much cash, it has a negative real return. Um, it's a tax um, that may be 2% a year you lose money in terms of cash. So you have to think about risk differently and you have to diversify best. That's the most important thing, to have a well-diversified portfolio. It's so the uncertainties that we have today are so great in terms of all the things I mentioned, the tax policies, the geopolitical. Certainly, we must experience it with the virus. You know, will the next wave come back and how will it be there? Diversification can be achieved without reducing your expected returns because of the way that nature, um, asset classes are priced. And then when if you're going to take tactical bets from those then those tactical bets, alpha on top of that strategic, well-diversified portfolio, should have highly diversified uh, bets um, deviated. Liquidity is going to be more important than before uh, because things change in unexpected ways. Look at how, um, in many of the cases, the businesses that you, one would have thought was a good business, and let's say you're in private equity, and, and that you're with that company. And so the restructuring, the ability to rebalance and diversify and to make and to be cautious about making a highly diversified uh, set of bets um, is, I think, the, uh, the future. But thinking even of asset classes, thinking about the value of money, you know, we look at asset classes um, and we say, oh, do I want my money to be in stocks and which stocks? Um, but we don't think about stocks, bonds. We think about those traditional asset classes. But we don't think about the value of money and what's going to happen in terms of the printing of that value of the money and how to diversify it well. So I think those are the things that have to be att paid attention to um, in much as they were important things in years prior to 1945. We're in a new paradigm.